All right. This week we're going to tie Gallop's craw. Um, this is uh, obviously a crayfish imitation. This is one of the better, realist, more realistic looking crayfish patterns that I've seen. There are some of them that are down to a T. You know, they'll use the the hen saddle for the for the pinchers and they'll epoxy the back and everything and they, they take forever they look great but they just don't fish well this one looks good and fishes well so we're gonna go ahead and get started on this one um, this is just a Dairiki 710 size 4 and I'm gonna get this tied in get our thread started bring it back a little bit um, for the antenna on this one Kelly used uh, moose originally I'm just gonna take some bucktail it's about the same you know it's uh, it it's really similar I mean for all the more that you use on this you're really gonna get the same effect the moose mane's a little straighter um, but at the end of the day I really don't think it's gonna matter too awful much so we're just gonna take this I'm gonna take just a small bundle of fibers, maybe maybe a dozen at the most. I'm going to comb through here and get all this stuff pretty even. It looks a little wild right now, but once I get it tied in, it'll clump together a little bit better. And we're just going to start this right here, get your wrap down, and you know what? I should probably go ahead and zoom in so you can see what the hell I'm doing. I haven't filmed in a minute, so I'm rusty. That's what I'm going to blame it on. I'm rusty. So there we go. We're going to get that bucktail tied in. And if you want to, go ahead and take just a wrap right around the bucktail. Come underneath. Pull tight on this. Try and get to where that dang zipper's not in the way. There we go. Pull tight on this and then come through and get another good two wraps right there and all that does is it just keeps your fibers together a little bit better um, there you can see the the black bucktail that we have tied in there for the antenna like I said moose mane is probably a little bit more effective but at the end of the day it's really not going to make a huge difference one way or the other it's not going to make or break this fly so um, if you want to substitute you can probably even put craft fur in there if you want um, it, as long as you get that black looking antenna. Um, I'm going to throw a quick half hitch in here just to kind of hold my material right where I want it and then I'm going to come up right about to the hook point here between the hook and the barb and we're just going to take some tank or a uh, olive, this is a sculpin olive uh, spinning deer hair we're just going to take this in, we're going to take two clumps, we're going to make quick spins on them. Um, no, do not worry about making these good, perfect, you know, uniform spins. This deer hair, hair here has a purpose, and I'll explain that once we get tying in the pinchers and everything. Basically all it is is to separate, uh, keep, to keep the pinchers separated slightly let's go ahead and take your deer hair here find your halfway point get one wrap right around it second and then get another there you go we have one spin like I said don't worry about we're not tying a finesse you know D&D head or cougar or anything like that we're not tying anything finesse. The only thing we're doing here is creating a bump to where this stuff is going to separate our uh, the two pinchers. It'll make a little bit more sense here as we get into that step. So I'm going to take one more clump. Like I said, we're going to do two of these. I'm going to take one more little clump of deer hair. Advance just right in front. I'm getting my hair cleaned out. I know you can't see because I'm zoomed in. And then we're going to take and clip the tips on this. Come 
run underneath, clip these tips, we're good to go. Now my thread is right in front. I'm actually going to bring that one more wrap. Same thing, one, two, get a third, get your spin. Everything looks good. Now right now this just looks ridiculous. It looks like a mess. It's going to make sense, I promise you. Go ahead right in front of this. Just kind of get a dam of thread build up. And we're good to go. Now you can take and clip this with your scissors if you want. I'm going to speed the process up just slightly and just go. I'm just going to push the razor blade right through here to get a rough cut on this uh, on the top and the bottom. And then I'll use my scissors for the remainder. Okay, that saves a little bit of time there just making that first cut. I may have got a little bit too much deer hair on this one, but eh, no, it's probably pretty close. So now this portion here is going to take a little bit of going to take a little bit of time because I want to make sure that I get all of this olive stuff out of here and I'm still able to see the antenna. So I'm going to take just a little bit of time trimming off this excess olive so bear with me here I'll try and make it as quick as possible and make it as clean as I can but no promises no promises so just getting all this stuff out of our way and then we'll We'll shape this after after the fact. Because right now as it sits, it's probably a little bit too big. So and we're getting close. There we go. That's good enough for now. Right, that's good enough period. I'm not going to get real picky on that because as you'll see a lot of this is going to wind up getting covered up. So just going to trim this up this bottom portion I'm going to flatten out and actually you can flatten out the top as well if you want. Don't get it cut so close to where it's going to make this like a buoyant portion right here you know like when we do the D&D's or the wedge style heads and you get this stuff really tightly cut at the very top and bottom um, it kind of gives a buoyancy to it but we offset that with the 26 degree bends so just go ahead and get your overall shape here uh, we'll trim this back just a little bit on the back portion of this so we kind of have a little wedge with the widest portion being toward the front of the hook. And I think I've spent enough time trimming this up. Everything looks pretty good. As we get more stuff tied in, you're barely even going to see this. So don't, uh, don't fret about it too awful much like I did there. So next we're going to take... These are 1 8 inch rabbit strips. The original, I believe, was muskrat, and they were probably a little bit wider, but I'm going to go with the rabbit on here. I mean, you can, you can do either one, really. Um, the muskrat probably has a little bit more, uh, a little bit more bulk to it but this will work right here. So what, what I'm going to do is measure this out. Right where the skin ends, I want that to line up with the end of my tail. So I'm just going to measure that out. I'm going to take a quick trim here. I'm going to peel all these fibers back. Peel these back, get my fibers. I hope, hopefully you can see this. 
get your scissors underneath all the fibers and make your cut. Then I'm just going to round this off. Cut a little wedge into this. Makes it a little bit easier to tie in. It's a little bit cleaner. And right in front of that deer hair that we spun, we're going to tie in the pinchers. And I like to butt this up right against the deer hair. That just ensures that it's going to flare out these these pinchers are going to are going to be more pronounced and they're going to be more flared. Now, when you're doing this, see how this this rabbit has a good curve to it. Um, you can try to eliminate that by taking the hide and just stretching this and seeing if it gets rid of that curve a little bit because in the package you know they get all coiled up and everything uh, we got rid of that curve just a little bit a little curve isn't bad you don't want an excessive curve so what I'm gonna do is just that that one's gonna work but if it didn't work I mean go to where you have a nice straight portion and then I'm just gonna measure this out the same distance as the first one that we tied in and then the same thing take this go ahead and trim it get the wedge to cut there you can see the nice little wedge that we have like I said earlier it makes it easier to tie in and then same thing I'm going to bring that wedge hopefully without putting the hook through my finger oh it didn't tickle I'm just going to tie this in directly on the side. You don't want it canned to one side or the other. You want this directly on the side. And then you can see there's the nice pinchers that we're after. That's the nice effect that we want. Um, and you can see how that deer hair is just causing it to flare out. You got some really good looking, a really good looking and realistic crayfish um, imitation. Now on some of these, I noticed when I was fishing the, the mo this fall, um, the crayfish that we have up here, they get this insanely blue tint to them. And it's, <laughs> it almost looks fake, it really does. So sometimes what I'll do, let me see if I can find it here. Um, I'll take this ice wing fiber in blue and I'll run this right down the sides or if I can find, and I haven't been able to find it yet, I may have to dye it myself, um, the rabbit fur that has the blue dye to it. It's like a mottled blue, dark olive brown, even some rust in it. Um, that's, that's what I'm after for, uh, for the color, but I haven't been able to find it. But like I said, sometimes I will throw some of this ice fur, the, uh, the ice wing fibers in there just to give it that blue a little bit more realistic uh, or imitative as to what we have on the mow but uh, not a hundred percent necessary on this one I'm, I'm not going to um, I'm just gonna leave it as is but I did find out that the reason that they turn that bluish color is a lack of vitamin A so the ones you see down in Louisiana that are like the or down, down south they're like that bright red that's an excess excessive amount of vitamin A and not that it matters at all I thought it was just a pretty cool fact um, so the next thing we're gonna do with this that was a really smooth transition there did you know that notice that that was, that was really smooth <laughs> um, the next thing I'm gonna do with this you can see I'm gonna reverse tie in our uh, rabbit strip so I want all of the fibers coming back this direction so if I tied it in as it sits right here all the fibers are going back if I tie it in upside down and flip this over it's going to be the opposite direction of what I want it so what I'm going to do is peel all of this stuff back find a good spot to tie this in at and then come underneath we're going to tie this in the opposite direction and this is going to be our shell back. 
So I'll go ahead and cut this wedge in there and tie this in with the hide facing up. This is a little, a little difficult to get tied in here. Wet that down. There we go. Go ahead and get that tied in and you'll be able to see when we flip this over all of this hair is now going to be going back in the direction that we want it. So for now I'm going to go ahead and get this out of the way. I'm going to measure out about what I'm going to need. Give, me, give myself a little bit extra. Cut that and then this is out of my way. Next up I'm going to take just a I got a pretty good bump there from tying in all these hides, but that's fine. It'll work out. Um, I'll smooth all of that out when I go throwing the dubbing in there. Um, I'm going to take just a brown saddle. Don't worry about picking good saddles out. Um, don't go through good material with this. Find your junk and tie with that. I'm going to peel all of these fibers back and I'm going to tie this one in from the tip with the shiny side facing forward. Get that tied in and then I'm just going to bring this right up to the top, create a dubbing loop. And there we go. Create that dubbing loop real quick and then I'm going to take this to the halfway point of what I have left. So from where I tied in the rabbit to the eye of the hook, I'm going to pick the halfway point and that's where I'm going to stop this first section of dubbing. And get that out of there. Half hitch and then we're ready to throw in our dubbing. Oh, come here. There we go. Actually move that out just slightly. I can see that causing trouble. So I'm going to take this tan UV ice dub. Um, you can use anything you want, you know, as long as it's somewhat close to a cream color um, or, you know, a good offset for what you have on the very top of the fly. Um, so if you're doing olive, you could do like a gray or a, I don't know. I, I like using the tan more than anything. I think it just looks a little bit better. But you want a good offset because if you look at the underside of any crayfish, um, the underside is typically a, a cream color, but it is always lighter than the back. So we'll go ahead and just throw this in. I'm going to work this over. Give that a couple extra wraps in the front. That way it kind of evens out the little transition that I had there. That should be enough for now. I'm going to call that good. And then I'm just going to take a couple of wraps with this. Stay out of there. A couple of wraps with this saddle. One, two, three, maybe a fourth. Why not? And we'll throw that, get that tied in. We're good there. Now we're going to tie in some copper wire. This is small copper wire. Um, you can go medium, um, maybe extra small at the smallest, depending on the size of the hook you're tying on or depending on the size of the crayfish. Um, but we'll get this tied in here and what this is going to do is it's going to hold down our rabbit strip. So I'm going to tie this in, work it toward the eye of the hook and then as always when I'm tying in these wires I'm just going to bring this back and loop it and tie it back on over itself if I can get it out of the eye of the hook. Well, I really screwed that one up. I really screwed that one up. Get out of there. There we go. I don't know how I did that. Made a mess. Made a 
mess. So I'm just going to get another dubbing loop here and I'm going to butt this right up against where I left off with the dubbing from before. Half hitch, get this in the cradle and then the same, we're going to repeat the same step. So we're going to take some tan dubbing here, we've got that picked out a little bit too much form our taper, get the wedge how we want it before we get it in the loop. Throw this in the loop. Try not to get a bunch of dubbing in your nose like I did. And there we go. We're working our way to the front. I didn't like how I had a little gap right there. So there we go. And just work that right up to the front. And you can go and peel that back a little bit. There we go. Tie this in. Now this is the next to the last step that we're going to do for this fly and we'll be done. But I'm just going to fold this over now. Go ahead and pull on it pretty tight. I'll find a good open spot here. I'm going to leave that in actually. I'm going to tie all of that down. We're going to pull this over and then tie in this rabbit strip. Get a couple of good wraps on that. And then I'm going to come right in front of it and really wrench it down. Now, with this right here, if you look at the crayfish, they have the broad, wide tails and everything. Um, just take this right in front of the eye, cut that flush. Leave some of the leave some of the fibers on there. I don't know how well you can pick this up. Hopefully you can see it half decent. But I left the fibers on there and that just gives a little bit more of a broad profile. And then you can come in if you want and just round these off. It's completely unnecessary, but you can if you want. Um, Actually, this underneath view is going to be the best. It's going to show you the best how that looks. Um, you can see that little broad tail that's on there. And then with the fibers that are left on, it gives it just a little bit more of a, uh, a little bit more of a profile. So then I'm going to come around on this. I'm going to wrap this opposite in the opposite direction. These, these rabbit strips are a little bit sparse. It's probably why Kelly used the muskrat. You get, you get some more, you get some better guard hairs with the muskrat too. I, I think. Oh, get out of there. And then I'm gonna come around here one more time. I'm just working my way through this. That looks good. And then I'm going to go around the eye of the hook underneath that little tail and tie this off. There's my junk scissors. We'll grab those. Call that good. Done with the wire. Now, we'll get these kind of straightened out a little bit. That wire looks terrible underneath there. Looks terrible on that side, but oh well. I'm going to live with it. I just didn't space it evenly or whatever, but rookie. Rookie, I tell you. Oh well. I don't think the wire is going to make or break that fly. All we're really putting that wire in there for is just to hold down the uh, rabbit strip and then that's going to be it now looking at this thing the way it sits right now it kind of looks a little funky uh, just because you know you have all of these hairs sticking up right here and it just doesn't really look back once it wet once it gets wet once you're in the water and actually fishing this one you're going to see I mean it looks 
very, very realistic. Um, I'll try and wet this thing down as much as I can, but you, I'll flip this over and you can see it. There, there you go. I mean, to where it has this, the antennas, the head, and then from the underneath side, you kind of have this, the, uh, the deer hair. It just gives the overall look of a crayfish. It really does. And when this thing's in the water, it looks even better than what it does right now. But, uh, that is Kelly Gallup's craw. Um, if there are any questions or comments on this one, leave them with me. And I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit more. There we go. Everything looks good. Couldn't see my monitor the whole way there. But like I said, that's Kelly Gallup's craw. Uh, any questions or comments, leave them with me and I'll get back to you. But thanks for watching and we'll catch you next week.